Don't tell me I'm out you of line. You are in line. Don't tell me I'm out of line. Well, you, you, you frame, don't tell me. You I'm frame, making a you frame, you frame third, the statement. You shut your mouth guy. because you don't know you're what you're talking about. You're going to tell me to shut my mouth? Yes, yeah. I did. All right. Yeah. Mm, that was uh, Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen having a testy exchange with the president of the Teamsters Union. Mm. Uh, on Wednesday, Teamsters General President Sean M. O'Brien testified at a hearing held by the U.S. Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions about putting a stop, essentially, to corporate union busting by companies like Starbucks, Amazon, and other multi-billion dollar corporations who have uh, decidedly not been sharing the immense wealth that they have with their workers. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> they've instead, and it's been shown, bought back their own stocks, boosting their own dividends, bonuses, executive compensation packages, uh, while also spending on lobbyists and, yes, union busting firms. Because, you know, we would rather spend money on these expensive firms than actually al uh, allow our uh, employees to collectively bargain. Hmm. Now, that said, Republican Senator Mullen uh, decided he was going to ignore all of that, uh, all of the anti-labor uh, you know, and, and labor violations made by these companies uh, when they're trying to unionize. And in fact, he's actually going to make things very personal against Sean M. O'Brien. Uh, and uh, we'll start with this. What do I bring? Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what job have you committed or have you, have you uh, uh, started? What job have you created? One job other than sucking the paycheck out of some other body, somebody else that you want to say that you're trying to provide because you're forcing them to pay dues? And no, we don't force them. Senator, you've asked the you're question. You're out of line. Let him answer Actually, the question. Actually, I haven't. And no, don't tell me I'm out of line. You are in line. Don't tell me I'm out of line. Well, you, you, you frame, don't tell me. You frame, I'm you frame, frame, state, you frame third, a statement. You frame a statement. You shut your guy. mouth yeah. because you don't know you're what you're talking about. Are going to tell me to shut my mouth? Yes, I did. Hold it. Hold it. Tough guy. I'm not afraid of physical. Hold it. But don't sit there and tell me I'm out of line. As far as my salary goes, my salary, if you follow me around, I walk, I actually look at this building. I bet you I work more hours than you do, twice that's, as many that's hours. That's impossible. But no, that is, that's true. Sir, you don't secondly, know what hard work is. Secondly, if you want to follow yeah. my schedule, be Secondly, be, be, I'll do it in a minute. Mm. So, look, uh, let me just say that I love how uh, the Teamsters guy is not taking any crap from Mark Wayne Mullen. So, by the way, this that that question: How much are you sucking off from the wor uh, workers' paycheck? Uh, okay. Uh, well, look. Uh, you could say that Mark Wayne Mullen is uh, sucking something else off at that point, uh, and that would be his corporate bosses. Hmm. But look, that question. By the way, he admitted when Bernie Sanders was shutting him down uh, and saying, "Hey, look, uh, you asked a question." Uh, and uh, he's going to answer the question. He's like, uh, it wasn't a real question. It was just rhetorical. So you were basically just saying nonsense then. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, now, you might wonder why he didn't want uh, O'Brien to answer the question. Well, it may be, again, it's because Mullen was trying to make a ridiculous soundbite that he could use to give to his corporate donors and say, look, look. I, I said the thing. I said the thing. Uh, aren't you happy? Please give me money and, and pats on the head, perhaps. Look, that's what these craven politicians do. Understand who they are. They bow down to the big corporations. They get on their hands and knees and beg for money for their, you know, campaigns. Uh, and in return, they get the campaign donations. And then we'll crush labor, fight at unions put out talking points that are not uh, true. Uh, and so, look, and, and by the way, you've heard these talking points. Oh, the unions, oh, they're just taking your money. They're getting fat off the money. No, no, no. That's Mark Wing Mullen. He's taking your money and getting fat off it. His salary is paid for with taxpayer money. And guess what he does with it? Nothing for you and everything for the donors. <laughs> look, unions, by the way, unions do have issues. I'm the first one to say that, and I'm a pro-union guy, all right? Unions have issues. There are times where unions and I, we didn't see eye to eye on things like, for example, universal health care. There were union groups that were uh, opposing Bernie Sanders' uh, presidential campaign, as well as Medicare for All, because they were able to negotiate, uh, you know, 
healthcare packages and use that as a way to say, hey, look, we're, we're providing that for you. I understand the reasoning, but denying Medicare for all, true universal healthcare to everyone because it's better for your union or recruitment, I don't know. I, I just don't like that reasoning. Uh, I think healthcare is a human right. That aside, unions are a incredibly positive, wonderful force that is necessary in this country. Okay. Uh, it, now, in some countries, they're not necessary because you've had workers that are incredibly powerful and also do things like worker co ops, for example, where they actually are the worker owners of these companies. That said, in America, we don't have anywhere near that system. We have an authoritarian top down uh, work, you know, caste system, essentially. Uh, and uh, so you need to have workers that collectively bargain, that get together and fight for each other, fight for wages and benefits. And so, look, the fact is that when you're able to do that, when you do get together, you do get these better benefits. Union workers get paid way better than non-union workers. They have better benefits, again, because of the fact that, that they have this collective bargaining. And so how much better is that? Uh, well, according to a report released last year by the Joint Economic Committee on Congress uh, of Congress and the House Education and Labor Committee, workers represented by unions earned 10.2% higher wages than non-union peers. They have better benefits. And again, just having the union exist in the industry raises wages. It has an effect to raise all wages, whether you're union or not. But it's not just pay, as I mentioned before. Unionized workers are also 18.3% more likely to receive employer-sponsored health insurance. And employers actually pay 77.4 uh, more, uh, I'm sorry, 77.4% more per hour worked towards the cost of the health insurance for unionized workers compared with non-unionized workers. So with a country that right now does not have socialized health care, that's a way better deal. Way better deal. They also found that unionization correlates to pay in premiums of 17.3% uh, higher for black workers. So, mar uh, you know, uh, uh, marginalized communities, smaller communities, and are benefiting greatly from unionization, 23.1% for Latino workers, 14.7% for Asian workers, compared to 10.1% uh, for white workers. Now, you might think, wait a minute, why are... Why do, why do white workers get uh, less of that? You have to understand that white workers actually start out generally higher than everyone else and still receive a boost from unionization. Female workers, by the way, uh, union workers, receive 4.7% higher hourly wages than non-union peers. But get this. In female-dominated service industries, union workers are paid 52.1% more than non-union workers. Wow. So obviously very clear benefits to being a member of a union. And by the way, unions are not just for lefties. There are plenty of Republicans that are in unions. There are plenty who have joined strikes uh, in places, for example, like John Deere, Warrior Met Coal, many other industries where it, your political affiliation doesn't matter. You can have, again, right wingers working next to socialists. In a union, they're still working for each other to raise each other's wages. That's what being in a union is about. And so collective bargaining is not a partisan thing. It is a worker versus employer issue. We all have to understand that. That's why, by the way, according to Gallup, at least 68% of Americans approve of labor unions, which is actually the highest level measured since 1965. At that time, 71% of the population approved of unions. And so lately we have seen a massive unionization push and acceptance uh, because look, at this point, unions are actually uh, at one of the 
lowest levels of membership in a very, very long time. And again, that's thanks to union busting by corporations, uh, politicians that have passed uh, things like right to work laws, uh, and and of course, uh, presidents like Ronald Reagan. And yes, let me include Biden in that, who also just broke uh, a couple of months ago a rail strike. And if, as a result of that, um, the rail unions were not able to go on strike. One of the things that they were asking for is a switch to ECS brake systems, which was the cause, you know, not having those ECS brake systems, uh, as well as, you know, uh, increased safety checks uh, and, in, you know, more people that are actually working on these trains. All of that contributed to the recent derailments in places like East Palestine, Ohio. Which, by the way, yesterday had another um, Norfolk Southern train derailment. Oops. Turns out when you do union busting, bad things happen. And that said, the Biden administration also gets credit for having an incredibly good NLRB, which is supporting these union drives, for example, Starbucks. So, yeah. Uh, that said, if you want to make America great again, form or join a union. <laughs> now, look, these facts are great for workers. And by the way, they're also great for the companies as well. For the long-term health of a com uh, company, it is good to have a workforce that can collectively bargain. It just, it makes sense. It makes sense. That said, short-term greed has taken over the minds of CEOs. And so corporations would rather self-destruct than allow employees to form a union. Which is why Starbucks uh, brought back Howard Schultz, who, by the way, was missing from this, uh, you know, hearing. And uh, not only that, but, uh, you know, they've been using illegal union busting tactics, firing people illegally. Again, thanks to decisions by the NLRB, um, Starbucks has been uh, found uh, to have violated all sorts of different labor laws. And they might be held accountable for it. So that said, you have to understand overall that people like Mark Green Mullen, they are the mouthpieces of the elites. That's what they are. That's what you heard there. He doesn't care about your paycheck. No, no, no. He cares about his paycheck, his own. I, again, if you're in a union, I just gave you the facts. You bring home more money. After dues, you get better benefits. That's it. That's the point. Does he want the reality to get out? No. Now, I also love uh, the fact that uh, when O'Brien said that he worked harder than Senator Mullen. Again, that's a fact. Congress is in session for only half the year. And when they are working, guess who does most of the work? The staffers. Look, we know that a lot of these uh, congressmen don't even write their own bills. A lot of them get sent pre-written bills from organizations like ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, which is essentially a corporate lobbying group. So they'll send people like Mullen bills pre-written that will essentially remove regulations, right? They'll re remove regulations or they'll be against wage increases or some sort of, you know, anti-labor legislation. Oh, and they also will uh, lower corporate taxes. That's one thing Republicans, once again, are trying to do. Lower corporate taxes. And guess what? Uh, that's when they're in Congress. When they're not in Congress, when they're not in session, what are they doing? Oh, right. They're out fundraising from corporate donors at their fancy resorts, retreats, and holding $2,500 a plate dinners are average people getting a seat at that table no the only way the average people can actually get a seat at any table is by being in a union mark wayne mullen is disingenuous trash and it's not just him 
It's all these corporate hack politicians who do not fight for the people.